Week two, NFL Power Rankings. Let's go. All right, before I even start, I just got to touch on a couple things. First off, if you're watching this video, you are an NFL fan. And if you're an NFL fan, you realize how large of a business the NFL is. Billions of dollars. Millions of people. It's pretty big. And because they know how big they are, I think that the NFL is starting to get a little too cute. First off, let's go ahead and put Thursday Night Football exclusively on Amazon Prime, Prime Video. And instead of testing the streaming service out during, I don't know, preseason, fuck it. Let's do it on the very first game. Furthermore, let's make that very first game a ridiculously good matchup. Let's take two premier AFC teams like the Chargers and the Chiefs and have them play on a streaming service that we've never done before. Now myself, I didn't watch this game because I am far too stubborn to pay more money for yet another streaming service. But I've heard from friends, from coworkers, even the people on the local sports channel here were bitching about it. The game kept freezing up, the circle of death, the buffering, the game was fuzzy. Good job, NFL. That kind of leads me to the next point. DirecTV owns the Sunday ticket, at least for now. And if you purchase the subscription as a DirecTV customer, you also get login information to be able to use the app. And from what I understand, week one, there was a lot of disruptions in their service. I personally did not have that problem week one. However, week two, from about halfway through the second quarter to about midway through the third quarter, my shit didn't work. I suppose that's okay because you know the NFL Sunday ticket, it's fucking cheap. And the last thing I wanna bitch about, every season they do two Monday night games. It's a double header, right? On week one to open the season. But they usually do one early and then the second one starts after the first one ends. For some strange reason, the NFL decided they wanted two NFL games on week two and they separated the kickoffs by about an hour and 20 minutes. I found it strange, but whatever, who cares? It was broadcasted on two different channels. But when the second game started, they kept using a split screen to show both fucking games. People were losing their shit. All over social media, people were flocking to ESPN's Facebook page or Twitter and complaining about the split screen. Listen, if I wanted to watch the second game, I would just change the fucking channel. There was literally zero reason to have a split screen going on. The first game was on ESPN, which is a premier channel. If you wanted to watch the second game, you could have flipped over to ABC which is not a premier channel. You can watch that shit with a fucking antenna. This made zero sense to me and like made my blood boil as I was trying to watch the Bills last night. Do better, NFL. All right, let's get this started. Number 32, Seattle Seahawks. Now granted, the Seahawks went up against a badass Niners defense, but their offense looked awful. Very hard to watch. I was high on Rashad Penny all season long because he finished last year off really strong and I actually always liked him from when he was a rookie but this past Sunday my dude had six carries for 15 yards maybe he only had 15 yards because he had six carries maybe he only had six carries because he only gained 15 yards the play calling in this game by the Seahawks was very questionable had me scratching my head a few times the one drive where the Seahawks actually got down in the red zone inside the 10 yard line they decided to have one of their backup running backs DJ Dallas toss a pass into the end zone looking for Metcalf and instead came up like seven yards short and it was like hands down the easiest interception that Niners linebacker is ever going to have. Like the Seahawks look like shit. After that big win against Denver week one, they came out looking like this. Literally the only points they scored was on a blocked kick ran back for a touchdown. Terrible play calling, back-breaking penalties. This is the worst team in the league. Number 31, Tennessee Titans. Paging Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, Monday Night Football, and the Tennessee Titans are looking for you. The number one seed from last year is looking awfully rough this year. A bad beat against the Giants in week one, then a total embarrassment on Monday Night Football at the hands of the Buffalo Bills has me wondering quite a few things. One, is A.J. Brown really that valuable? Or two, which I tend to agree with, were they just a fluke last year? Uh-huh. So last night, Derrick Henry had five runs in which he gained negative yards. Literally every time the Titans play the Bills, this happens. The Bills stuff his ass. And what happens is he has one big ass run for like 85 yards. Then suddenly his 12 carries for 17 yards look like 13 carries for over 100. This right here is why I feel that Derrick Henry is one of the most overrated players in football. And I always have. Go back, 
Watch my videos. I've always said it. Well, his ability to break that 85 yard is talent. Is it though? Or is it an offensive line that creates a massive hole? He sees it, he hits it like every other running back in the fucking league. I'm just saying, I'm glad that the Titans are gonna be down in the dumps for a little bit because they're probably my most hated team in football. Number 30, Washington Commandos. Split personality QB, AKA Carson Wentz. This week, he flipped the script. He came out looking like booty hole. Then he heated up in the second half. But that 22 to nothing hold to the Lions might have been a little bit too much for him to overcome. I tell you what, Washington has their hands full trying to figure out this roller coaster of a quarterback. But what they really should figure out is what the fuck their defense is doing. They've given up a ton of points to teams like the Jaguars and the Lions. Number 29, Indianapolis Colts. Dude, what the fuck, man? Did you really just get beat by the Jaguars 24 to nothing? I mean, you guys do know that you have, like, Jonathan Taylor on your team, right? He's pretty good. You should probably get him more involved in the offense. I mean, it's just my humble opinion. Who the hell am I, right? Like, at halftime, this dude had five carries for four yards. Five carries? So there were talks before this game that this is probably going to be Frank Reich's final season as head coach. Yeah, I'm not sure that this dude's going to make it to the end of the year. I mean, you tie with the Texans, lose to the Jaguars, Look, as a Bills fan, I'm always going to have a place right in my heart for that man, Frank Reich. But this is no good. The Colts had 10 possessions in this game. 10. Five of them led to punts. The other five led to turnovers. 218 total yards and an eighth straight loss in Jacksonville. This, that's crazy. Number 28, Carolina Panthers. It's just Baker being Baker. I wonder if he's still confused on to why Cleveland moved on from him. I don't know him personally, but I'm sure in his little mind, he still considers himself an elite quarterback in this league. It really is so painful to watch him manage this offense. Last year, his excuse was a bum shoulder. Ow! But what's going on this season? His vagina hurt? How many of his passes are going to be batted down at the line? Did you see his interview where he blamed his parents for him being short? That's no excuse, sir. Doug Flutie never had this many passes batted down. He's playing like he's scared for some reason. He has talent around him, much like he did in Cleveland. He's got the run game with CMC. He's got offensive weapons with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. This man shouldn't be looking this bad. Number 27, New England Patriots. Mac Jones, once again, looks terrible. Terrible. But luckily for him and the Patriots, they were able to run the ball all over the Steelers. They got themselves a very hard-fought win. But it still amazes me. 20 years of dominance from this team. And now I'm struggling for things to say about them in my ranking. Number 26, New Jersey Jets. I don't know why I look up when I point it to Joe Flacco heads back to Cleveland wearing green this time instead of purple. But damn, that performance in the fourth quarter looked like he went back in time to that one season when they called him an elite quarterback. This game was insane. The Jets scored twice with less than two minutes left in the game. I have a friend named George who loves my videos. Big Jets fan. He always gets mad when I rag on the Jets. He calls me biased. Well, he made a Facebook post after this game, and he said, put some respect on my team's name. You got it. That comeback was impressive. Huge win. And I'm glad that it's supplying some excitement, maybe temporary, but some excitement nonetheless for Jets fans. Number 25, Las Vegas Raiders. Damn. There were some seriously high hopes for this team this year. I understand it's only been two weeks and anything can happen, but this game against the Cardinals, they shouldn't have lost. <laughs> no, seriously, they shouldn't have lost this game. <laughs> Devontae Adams was targeted 10 times in this game and only caught two. He was targeted 17 times last week. It's too much. The second half of this game against the Cardinals was just... <sighs> like, I thank everything within me. If there is a God above that I am not a Raiders fan. I mean, after dominating the first half and like making the Cardinals look like asshole for six straight quarters, including week one, somehow the Raiders were in overtime. I remember watching this game and Hunter Renfro fumble the ball in overtime and you just heard a collective <gasps> gasp from Raider Nation. Whoo, it was recovered. Whew. But just for fun, Renfro was like, oh yeah, watch this shit. And he fumbled it again. This time it was picked up and ran back for a touchdown and the Cardinals win in overtime, and the Raiders go home 0-2. This can't possibly be fun for Raider fans. You have other weapons on your team. Devontae Adams isn't everything. Sorry, it just it needed to be said. Number 24, 
Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence had himself his best career start since coming into the league. Dude was 25 for 30, 235 yards. And the Jaguars went on to shut out the Colts 24-0. The Jags' defense had five sacks, 11 quarterback hits, had three interceptions, and had Matt Ryan wishing he was back in Atlanta. And then again, I think Colt fans wish that too. Number 23, Cincinnati Bengals. So here I am making my power ranking videos, right? I'm sitting here thinking it's just my friends watching, you know, no big deal. I think, I think it's starting to gain some traction. Because I'm getting some interesting phone calls. You're not going to believe this. But Joe Burrow himself keeps calling me because he wants to discuss my power rankings. My dude keeps calling me. Am I going crazy or didn't the Bengals go out and like beef up their offensive line? I think I am going crazy because they gave up six sacks to the Cowboys and that's 13 on the fucking year. And unless they want to see Brandon Allen start some games, they might want to fix this problem before they get Joe Burrow killed. And just a PSA for all Bengals fans out there. During the offseason and in the preseason, and you were getting all pissed off because all the experts were picking the Chargers, Chiefs, and the Bills. Do you get it now? Do you? Do you get it? Number 22, Chicago Bears. Yo, the Bears' offense is pretty fucking terrible. Like, really bad. There was no monsoon in this game. Justin Fields' final line was 7 for 11 for 70 yards. Yo, for a decent quarterback... Those are stats on one drive. Listen, the Bears defense might keep them in some games, but they need something, something from their offense. And I'm not sure where that's going to come from. Did they get screwed by that call at the goal line? Maybe. But you're the Bears. So who really cares? <laughs> that shit rhymed. I'm like the next Eminem, baby. Mmm, M&Ms. You see how bad the Bears are? I can't, I'm sitting here talking about fucking can. Number 21, Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, so the Steelers clearly, clearly missed T.J. Watt already. And they allowed the Patriots to run up and down, up and down the field. 21 of Mitch Trubisky's 33 pass attempts were from 9 yards or less. Listen, Mitch, checkdowns are not going to win you many games in the NFL. Not nowadays. This was the reason why I hated Tyrod Taylor. He was the checkdown king. But Mitch Trubisky's like, yo, that crown looks pretty hot. I'm coming for it. But at the same time, he may not have that opportunity because, like Steeler fans were yelling, Kenny Pickett. I think a change might be coming soon. Number 20, Houston Texans. Damn, man. The Texans almost pulled off a giant upset and ruined Russell Wilson's freaking homecoming. But the lack of playmakers on this offense totally came into play, especially in the fourth quarter. Lovey Smith continues to play conservatively not taking any kind of chances, which is really just boggling my mind. The expectations for this team are so low. Take your chances. Come on. Deshaun Watson is not coming back. He's gone. He's gone. You got to move on. Number 19, Cleveland Browns. Did you all see the elf on the field? No, I'm not talking about Kyler Murray. I'm talking about the new logo in the middle of the field for the Browns. It's so weird. The team's name is the Browns. Their color is orange. Their logo is a elf the fans wear dog masks they call themselves the dog pal what i i don't i don't get it what i also don't get is how nick chubb can score a tutty with a minute 55 left and put them up by 13 and they lose the game i mean granted they played a freaking powerhouse of a team oh my god old man rivers joe flacco came into cleveland scored two touchdowns including a 66 yard touchdown bomb against this shitty 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 I get it. That's why, that's why they're called the Browns. This was definitely a Cleveland Browns type of loss. Number 18, Atlanta Falcons. Are we not going to talk about the fact that the Falcons found themselves on the other end of a 28-3 lead? And then they started to come back. I wanted them to win this game so fucking bad because of the score. Look, I had the Rams in my like elimination pool, in my survivor pools. I needed them to win. But when the score was 28 to three, it had to, it had to have happened. They found themselves on the goal line, down by six points with just over a minute to go. And then Marcus Mariota threw an interception to seal the fucking game. And all my hopes and dreams of making an excellent segment for the Atlanta Falcons in my rankings video went to shit. But hey, it's worth noting, Drake London is the real deal. He's living up to the hype despite having a subpar quarterback throwing him the ball. Number 17, Arizona Cardinals. In what was the craziest game I have watched in a really long time, the Cardinals pulled off 
a crazy comeback win in Las Vegas against the Raiders. At halftime, the Cardinals looked like ass. And that was six straight quarters that the Cardinals did not look good. Then came along the second half, and Kyler Murray started using his legs to extend play. There was a two-point conversion that the Cardinals converted that was timed at 22 seconds, and Kyler Murray ran 84.75 yards. Absolutely insane. And it was in overtime. I don't need to be descriptive about this because if you haven't seen this highlight, then you're not a true NFL fan and you shouldn't be watching this video. But in overtime, a fumble recovery returned to the house for a touchdown, won the game for the Cardinals. But what I wanna talk about is not the win. It's Kyla Murray being a bitch. This dude took it upon himself to run over to the front row and started aggressively high-fiving fans in the front row. I mean, the way he's swinging his arm, it looked like he was throwing body shots. And as it happened, a Raiders fan who was excited as well, trying to get in on the love being given, swung his arm forward and slapped Kyla Murray in the face. I think we all know that this was inadvertent. I think we all know this was just the heat of the moment. There was excitement. Oh my God, Kyla Murray is right here. I want some high five. But no, this little bitch Kyla Murray is getting the police involved saying he was slapped in the face. One, don't go over there. You, you avoid this by not going over to the fans. Two, it was a fucking kid or so it looked like. Three, shut up. Number 16. Dallas Cowboys. Cooper Rush, baby. Are we finna see a Cooper Rush versus Dak Prescott quarterback controversy in Dallas? <laughs> Stop. Stop right now. Listen, Cooper's definitely filling in nicely since Dak, you know, hurt his hand. And that was definitely a hell of a win against the reigning AFC champ, Bengals. But the credit needs to go to that Dallas defense. Cowboy defenders lived in Joe Burrow's ass all game. And this man named Micah Parsons, he is hands down the defensive player of the year so far through two weeks. Definitely a nice win for the Cowboys. Let's see what happens next. Number 15, Detroit Lions. All right, check this stat out. This is fucking crazy. Since week one of 2018, the Lions have not scored 35 points in any of those games until week 18 of last year when they scored over 35 against the Packers. They've already scored twice this season over 35 points. Now they're doing it three games in a row. Break up the Detroit Lions offense. Okay, that's enough of that. Aiden Hutchinson, go blue, had himself three sacks in the first half this week against the Washington guys. The Lions get themselves a well-deserved win, and I actually have them in the top half of my rankings for the first time ever. Number 14, Denver Broncos. Honestly, real talk. If head coach Nathaniel Hackett can have a job as a coach in the NFL. Well then Kevin Garnett was right, anything is possible. This man is clueless. The Broncos offense was booed for the first three quarters against the Houston Texans. Timeouts were wasted to avoid delay of game penalties. That happened so often at such pivotal moments that the Broncos fans took exception to that and started counting down the play clock in unison throughout the stadium to let them know that that shit is coming. The shit actually sounded pretty bad. Russell Wilson's first home game in front of the Denver crowd didn't go according to the way they wanted it, but they squeak out a win. Maybe they just need time, who knows? Number 13. New Jersey Giants. Living in New York my entire life, I was all about rooting against the Giants. Fuck the Giants and fuck Giant fans. The arrogance in which they like, oh, I just hated them. Now I live in Dallas Cowboy land and I can truly appreciate the Giants now. I watched Graham Gano kick a game winning 56 yard field goal on Sunday to beat the Panthers. And when I tell you I yelled as if Josh Allen had just leaped over yet another linebacker, why is this happening? Why am I drawn to the Giants? Why do I not feel dirty rooting for them like I do when I root for the Jets for betting purposes? Giants start the year 2-0 and have a lovely Monday night matchup with the Cowboys this week. Number 12, New Orleans Saints. Fourth quarter, score tied 3-3. Saints defense was looking legit, shutting down Tom Brady in that offense. And then what all teams hope for, Marshawn Lattimore poked the bear. Smart. Lattimore taunted Tom Brady, slapped away his hand after he converted a first down, and all hell broke loose. You out here fucking with Tom Brady, and you didn't expect anything to happen? My man got trucked by Mike Evans. 
I'd really love to know what Lattimore was thinking here because this incident clearly woke the Bucks the fuck up. On top of that, Jameis Winston still looking like Jameis Winston, three more interceptions, and the Saints move to one and one. Jameis Winston is exactly why I can't fully 100% get on board with the Saints. Number 11, Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson continues to look like an MVP candidate after two weeks of football, but his inability to convert short yardage plays really kind of screwed him and the Ravens from winning a nice game against the Dolphins. Injuries and just absolutely dog shit play on defense allowed the Dolphins to come all the way back and pretty much embarrass the shit out of the Ravens for everyone to see. Good fucking job. Number 10, Minnesota Vikings. Primetime football, Monday night. National stage, everybody's watching. Here comes Kirk Cousins. Oh my gosh. Kirk Cousins is now 2-10 and 10 on Monday night football. 2-10. and 10. Dude, the Vikings looked so good on week one. They dominated the Packers. For them to come out on Monday Night Football and lay an absolute fucking egg against the Eagles is so disappointing. And I'm not even a Vikings fan. I still have faith that the Vikings are going to make the playoffs. But shit like what happened last night just can't happen anymore. Number nine, Miami Dolphins. Now, to say that Tua silenced all of his critics, that's a bit irresponsible and wildly inaccurate. Because he had a good second half in one game... He silenced his critics? Come on, man. He still looks like trash more often than him looking good. He had an excellent fourth quarter. You cannot take that away from him. He looked legit. But that wasn't the story in the first half. Look, I hate Tua. Everyone knows that. I'm not discrediting him. What I'm saying is his critics are still there and still have a legitimate beef. And truth be told, this whole Tua thing is starting to get old. Let's just play some football. Tyreek and Waddle are now being claimed unstoppable? They're playing great. Absolutely, but unstoppable? It's been two fucking games. It's been 120 minutes of football. I'll tell you what, and I've made this deal with my friend Jeremy. If the Dolphins come out week three and they do what they did against the Ravens, against the Bills, I'll shut my fucking mouth. Good luck. Number eight, San Francisco 49ers. Yo, could you imagine if the Niners would have traded Jimmy G like everyone envisioned they would? Look, it's truly a shame what happened to Trey Lance, and I wish him well, but I believe this is a blessing in disguise for San Francisco. Not only is Jimmy G an established starter in this league, but I think this motherfucker's gonna be playing with a chip on his shoulder now. This could be bad news for the rest of the NFC. Now, I'm not saying that Jimmy G is an elite QB, because I don't think that at all, but I do think that Trey Lance was a massive question mark. Jimmy G took them to the NFC Championship game last year, and ultimately, it's going to be the defense and the run game that determines how far this team goes this year. I just think that Jimmy G is going to make less mistakes than Trey Lance would have. Number seven, Los Angeles Rams. All right, all right, I see. Allen Robinson, Cam Akers, they both played in week two after being absent week one. Good job. So the Rams, they go ahead and rebound off of that uh, ass whooping from the Buffalo Bills in week one by playing the Atlanta Falcons. And after building a healthy lead in the first half, they almost give the fucking game away thanks to Matthew Stafford and his interception happy ass. But ultimately, it was a goal line interception by none other than Jalen Ramsey, who sealed the game for the Rams. A game that really shouldn't have been this close against a team that had no business playing this well against them. I'm now sitting there really upset with myself with having the Rams at number seven. Ram fans need to have some concern here. Number six. Los Angeles Chargers. Let me tell you something. In this game here, there were many football fans out there, many male football fans out there, that were suddenly very excited and very happy that their wife orders so much shit on Amazon that they already have Amazon Prime. It's funny how that shit works, huh? On a Thursday night against the Chiefs, this was the Chargers' first chance to let the Chiefs know, hey, we're here. We're here to live up to that hype that everybody is putting on our name. And they failed. To make that statement. I know. Keenan Allen was hurt. He didn't play. Brandon Staley wasn't going for it on fourth down like he always fucking does. And the injuries were starting to pile up for the Chargers, including their quarterback, Justin Herbert, who I heard really needs a lot of uh, barbecue sent in his direction. His barbecue really goes well on ribs. I was fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number five, Green Bay Packers. Well then, Green Bay Packers, they showed up. 
We were looking everywhere for you guys week one. Sunday Night Football, Chicago Bears, oldest rivalry, blah, blah, blah. I can't stand this rivalry. But Aaron came out and dominated. Not Rodgers, Aaron Jones. But the story of the night was their defense, not their offense. Who am I kidding? The story of the night was the goal line stand. Was he in? Was he out? Who knows? I had the Packers minus 10. I stood to win some money, and I'm good with it. Number four, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All week long, I was hearing how Tom Brady can't beat the Saints. There's something about the Saints that the Bucs can't win. He always has trouble against... No, sir. He had trouble against Sean Payton. Sean Payton ain't there no more. And I was adamant about that. I was arguing with people. And the first three quarters of this game, when Brady looked like poo, I was eating my words. Thank you, Marshawn Lattimore, for setting this motherfucker off. The Bucs get a win, move to 2-0, and but they're, like, boring. Like, I don't... I, I find nothing entertaining about this team. Number three, Philadelphia Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jalen fucking hurts. My boy has arrived. I love listening to Cowboy fans get so offended. All you have to do to piss them off is just say, hey, Dak isn't even as good as Jalen Hurts, and they lose their fucking mind. <laughs> it's so much fun. Now I'm curious if they still feel this way, because Jalen Hurts is looking legit. I went into this game last night thinking that the Vikings were going to pull out a win. I thought the Vikings, I'm very high on the Vikings. And the Eagles shut that shit the fuck down. They were like, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's like that TikTok sound. Hey, uh-uh. Now, as good as the Eagles looked last night on offense, and as good as Jalen Hurst looked, the real fucking MVP plays defense, and his name is Darius Slay. I'm sure you've heard all these reports, but my dude held Justin Jefferson to one catch. And on top of that, Darius Slay had two catches himself. He had enough... He had more catches than fucking Justin Jefferson. Fly, Eagles, fly. Between Bills Mafia and the Eagles fans, I don't even know if this fucking country could support a Bills-Eagles Super Bowl. That, oh my fucking... Number two, Kansas City Chiefs. As per Patrick Mahomes, this was an ugly win for the Chiefs. Those were his words. You know what, man? An ugly win is still a fucking win. No one's ever going to look at a win in the win column and say that shit was ugly so it doesn't count. It fucking counts. And despite it being an ugly win, it was a win against a team that has been talking so much shit. All these experts saying that they're going to surplant the Chiefs. They're going to win the division. The Chargers are it. It's over. The, the Chiefs are done. Tyreek Hill's gone. And all Patrick Mahomes did was say, I don't care that the game was ugly. It was a big-ass win. Before I get to number one, I just want to say, in the deepest part of my heart, I truly believe this. I'm not being biased. You may think I am, but I'm not. The Gap between team number two and team number one is so fucking large that the Titanic wouldn't have seen the iceberg in that gap. Oh, you you, you disagree? You, you think I'm wrong? Fight me. Number one, the Buffalo Bills. First and foremost, my thoughts go out to Dane Jackson. If you watched the game last night or saw the highlights, that hit was so gruesome. I've seen people's legs break. I've seen Joe Theismann, Willis McGahee's knee, the dude from the UFC that snapped his shin. The, the college player in basketball who his bone was sticking out. I can watch all that shit with no hesitation. I could not watch the replays after a certain point of that hit last night. Something about the neck and just fuck me. Get better, big boy. I also want to put out there into the universe that my prediction before the game was 41 to 11. Strange, I know, 11. I was thinking 41 to 3, garbage time, touchdown, two-point conversion. My point was the Bills were going to fucking put an ass whooping on the Titans. And truth be told, in the first half of this game, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. Some of you know I wasn't feeling it because I texted you that I wasn't feeling it. The first quarter sucked. The Bills did not look good. Now, some people noticed when the first quarter ended, Sean McDermott, head coach, rallied his entire fucking roster over to him, calmed them down, told them you were playing too overhyped. And from that point on, the Bills started playing solid, fundamental football and straight dominated dominated the Tennessee Titans. I could literally spend 20 minutes talking about this offense's performance. Josh fucking Allen throws the ball 900 yards with a flick of his fucking wrist. Stephon Diggs out here looking like a fucking MVP. Oh, but you know, Gabe Davis is hurt. There's a, the offense is going to struggle a little tonight. That run. Really? Next man up, baby. Isaiah McKenzie. Jay Kumaro. You guys don't even know who that man is. Offense just looked fucking ridiculous again but i'm gonna say exactly what i said last week their defense is better than their offense i stand firmly when i say this i'm not being biased 
You're going to think that I am. I think that this is one of the strongest rosters in the history of the NFL. I don't give a fuck if you disagree. It is a team. It's a team. It's not a collection of fucking superstars. It's a team, and they play like a fucking team. And I honestly cannot see the Bills losing any game this year. Any game that they do lose, I will be shocked. And you should be too. Monday Night Football against the previous season's number one seed. And we took Josh Allen out in the third quarter. The Bills bitch slapped the Titans back to preseason. Uh, what a fucking game.